running out of options. The lawyers I write to only huff and puff. They echo Murray and say nothing can be done. No, they don't want the bother of opposing him. Oh, precisely. I wish Mary wasn't so confident it could all be put right. Meanwhile, we have to watch that dreadful woman parade around the village as if she owned it. I think she means well. Meaning well is not enough. Poor Dr Clarkson. I, what has he done to deserve that termagant? I think he's in for an uncomfortable afternoon. But it why? On my way here, I saw her go into the hospital. She looked extremely determined. Not as determined as I am. I have the adrenaline here in my hand. Will you really deny the man his chance of life? I just wish it was a treatment I was more familiar with. Will that serve as your excuse when he dies? Nurse, can you prepare Mr. Drake for his procedure, please? Well, Mrs. Crowley, I have a feeling we will sink or swim together. Mr. Drake, your heart is not functioning properly. And as a result, your pericardial sac is full of fluid. I'm proposing first to withdraw the fluid and then to inject the adrenaline to stimulate the heart and restore normal activity. Is it dangerous, Doctor? The draining may stop the heart and the adrenaline may not be able to restart it. Mrs. Drake, the choice is simple. If your husband endures this procedure, he may live. If not, he will die. Please, please, no, let me pass. I must see the doctor. At once. Your ladyship. Just as I thought. Dr. Clarkson, tell me you will not permit this amateur to influence your professional opinion. Amateur? My dear woman, do not let them bully you. They'll not disturb the peace of your husband's last hours, not if I can help it. But that's just it, my lady. I don't want them to be his last hours. Not if there's a chance. Please, Doctor, do what you must. As president of this hospital, I feel I must... Twelve. ...tell you, I shall bring this to the attention of the board. You're doing very well. Have you no pity? Adrenaline. Quickly, quickly. His heart stopped. Oh. Ready? Mm-hmm. Yes. You don't have to worry. She may be president, but I'm the patron, so you're quite safe with me. Please. My mother was right, then. The man's life was safe. Well, I, I like to think that we were both right. But I'm not sure Lady Grantham will be so easily convinced. Then we must strengthen the argument. Cousin Isabel wants something to do very well. Let's make her chairman of the board. She'd like that, wouldn't she? Oh, certainly she would. Then my mother will have to listen to her. She's been an absolute ruler there for long enough. It's time for some loyal opposition. Well, if you're quite certain, my lord. 
What were you going to say? Well, at the risk of being impertinent on your own head, be it. <laughs> About your scheme for restoring the estate cottages. You don't mind my interfering? My dear fellow, I brought you here to interfere. In fact, why don't you stay for dinner? And we'll talk about it. We'll send down to Molesley for your clothes. I'd better not. My mother's expecting me. But in fact, I've been meaning to speak to you about Molesley. Oh? Would you find me very ungrateful if I dispensed with his services? Why? Has he displeased you in some way? Not at all. It's simply that he's superfluous to our style of living. Is that quite fair? To deprive a man of his livelihood when he's done nothing wrong? Well, I wouldn't quite put it. Your mother derives satisfaction from her work at the hospital, I think. Some sense of self-worth. Well, certainly. Would you really deny the same to poor old Mosley? And when you are master here, is the butler to be dismissed, or the footman? How many maids or kitchen staff will be allowed to stay? Or must every one be driven out? We all have different parts to play, Matthew. And we must all be allowed to play them. Why must we all go to the hospital? I'm afraid Papa wants to teach Granny a lesson. Poor Granny. A month ago, these people were strangers. Now she must share power with the mother and I must marry the son. You won't marry him, though, will you? What, marry a sea monster? <laughs> We shouldn't laugh, that's so unkind. Mm. But he must marry someone. Edith, what are you thinking? You know, I don't dislike him as much as you do. Perhaps you don't dislike him at all. Perhaps I don't. Well, it's nothing to me. I've bigger fish to fry. What fish? Are we talking about E-N? How do you know that? Have you been poking around in my things? Of course not. Come on. Who is he? It's not fair if you both know. You won't be any the wiser, but his name is Evelyn Napier. The Honourable Evelyn Napier, son and heir to Viscount Branksome. Who wants an old sea monster when they can have Perseus? <laughs> if you're going to the ceremony, I thought we might walk together. Certainly I'm going. I want to see the old bat's face when they announce it. I must try not to look too cheerful. Or shouldn't I talk like that in your presence? Do you find me very ridiculous, Mrs Hughes? Putting on airs and graces I've no right to. What's brought this on? Nothing. Except at times I wonder if I'm just a sad old fool. Mr Carson, you are a man of integrity and honour. You raise the tone of this household by being part of it. So no more of that, please. <laughs> <laughs>